Hey guys, and welcome to the next tutorial. So in this one, we're going to make it so that our bullets, instead of just bouncing off the asteroids, they'll uh, actually cause the asteroid to explode. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load our projectile into the Blueprints Weapons Ship Projectile folder. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to cast the other actor. Cast to Roid Field. Like that. If the cast fails, just go ahead and execute what we already did. But uh, if it doesn't fail, what we want to do is we want to get the number of instances in our instance. So get instance count. And that'll automatically get our uh, instance static mesh inside the roid field. And for each, for loop, connect that to the last index. For each, we want to... Basically what we're going to do is we're going to get the... Uh, we're going to spawn, because the way instance uh, meshes work is they don't store a lot of, they don't store data specific to themselves. So we can have lots of asteroids, we can have 1,000, and it's really efficient, but <clears throat> we don't have a way to get a specific one. So we're going to allow, we're going to do that by creating, sorry, go back to our weapons and projectile, and event graph. We're going to create a target point for each of the instances, and then we're going to compare that to the location of where the bullet hits to find the nearest asteroid and then destroy that asteroid. It'll make more sense once we're done. So we're going to spawn actor from class. We're going to spawn a target point. Sorry, and uh, we actually want to off our instant static mesh here. So we want to drag and we want to do get instance transform. We'll connect that. And for the instance index, we'll connect the index in the for loop. So this will get every instance static mesh and it'll get their location. It'll spawn a target point there. Now we want to get the distance between the uh, our bullet and the target point. So we will. Get actor, right click, get actor location. And we'll get self. And we'll do get distance. Sorry, distance. Is that not working? Distance to. Oh, it's, uh, doesn't, it already allows us to connect ourselves. All right. So just do get, right click and do get distance to. And connect the other actor to the other actor. And we'll do self. And then we're going to promote this to a variable. This variable will be named distance to asteroid, compile and save. And we want that to have a really high default value. So we'll set that to 1000. Now we actually want to make sure that the distance between our target point and our bullet is uh, below the previous distance. So we'll do get, and we'll drag off that and we'll do less than. We'll click, hold B and click, so we get a branch, we'll connect these, and we'll connect that if that's true. So what this is going to do is it's going to spawn a bunch of target points on the location of every single instance, and it's going to get their distance to the bullet, or it's going to compare the distance of the, the location of the bullet to the distance of the targets that we spawned, and if the, if they're less than Oops, sorry, need to fix this. So we're gonna actually drag off the target point here and we're gonna do get actor location. And we'll connect that to, sorry, what are we doing here? I'm screwing this up. So if our distance to, okay, so if this distance, if this distance is less than our distance to asteroid, then we will set the distance. So what we're gonna do here, so let me explain this since I uh, was a little unclear there. So our distance to asteroid by default is set to 1000. So we're gonna spawn a target point on every asteroid and we're gonna check the distance between our bullet and that target point. And if it's less than our distance to asteroid variable, we will set the distance to asteroid variable to this location. So what this will do is every time there's a shorter distance between the target point and the bullet, it'll set that to be the distance asteroid. And then this will allow us to get the index. So we will promote this to a variable. 
asteroid to destroy index. And we will click save, set it here. Whoops, put it over here for some reason. So we'll just drag this index over here. If you want to be a little more organized, you can double click to create these little reroute nodes. Oops. So we'll just uh, reroute this so it looks a little nicer. Now, when this uh, for loop has completed, we want to delete that asteroid that's nearest the bullet. So we're going to do remove instance. Oh, sorry, we're going to need to drag off our instant static mesh over here. We're going to do remove instance. And you see we need an instance index, but we have that now with the asteroid to destroy index. So we'll do that. Now when this is completed, we want to destroy all our target points so they're not wasting time. So we're going to do a, actually we'll set a lifespan. So we'll drag off our target point here and we'll do set lifespan. And the lifespan can be one second. Okay, so when we play now, we should be able to go and destroy the nearest asteroid. Nope, we didn't set that up yet. Yes, we did. Asteroid to move. So why is this not working? Oh, I know why. When this is completed, we need to set our distance to asteroid back. Distance to asteroid set. Now it'll work? No. Oh, we need to get the world space of the instance transform. That's why. Okay, so yeah, we need to get the world space. And that should work. There we go. Now we can delete the nearest asteroid that we shoot. And this is fairly performance uh, efficient, I believe. I mean, the spawning target points isn't. We can probably make that more efficient by only spawning ones within range. But for now, this is good enough. Actually, no, it's not good enough. We want our asteroids to explode, not just be deleted. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our space folder. Sorry, we're going to go to our starter content, props, SM rock. We're going to right click that. And we're going to do create destructible mesh. We're going to click fracture mesh. So it explodes. We'll save that. Close. And now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that and we're going to create an actor. Asset actions, create blueprint using this. We'll put this in blueprints space. And we'll name this DM destructible roid. Now for the processes of this, we're just gonna make this asteroid automatically blow up when it uh, when the game starts. So uh, drag the uh, destructible mesh into the uh, event graph. Off that, do apply damage. Oops. Connect that to begin play. The damage amount we'll set to 500. Impulse strength we'll set to 500. We'll also do get world location for the destructible, and we'll apply that to the hit location and the impulse direction. File that and save. And uh, another thing we need to do is go into the uh, class. Let's select the destructible and enable gravity. We want to disable that. Again, we're going to click on the destructible, 
and type in gravity at the search and disable gravity. This way it'll look better in space. So now what we need to do is when we remove the instance, we want to destroy, we want to add the destructible. So we're going to do that before we remove the instance so we can still get its transform. So we're going to copy this get instance transform. We're going to apply the asteroid to destroy index to that. And we're going to get the instance static mesh to apply there. Make sure it's in world space. We'll get that. And clear up some room here. And off the transform, we're going to do spawn actor from class. Connect the completed to that. That to that. Organize this a bit better. And for the spawn actor class, we're going to add the DM destructible roid. Compile. Save. Now, if this works, it should make a destructible asteroid that explodes when we shoot these. Yep. So we can blow up these asteroids now. And we should be able to fly through them, knocks them around. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video on destructible asteroids. And in the next one, we'll make uh, missiles that can target the asteroids and then fire at them and track them and then blow them up. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you.